In the previous episode, my guest Sharon McClung highlighted the changing perception of motherhood and career development. If you had to boil down parenthood to a skill set, you would certainly have to be highly proficient in multitasking, crisis management, negotiations, working long hours, and performing under stress. Sounds like the perfect employee, right? As Sharon pointed out, if you want to get something done, ask a busy mom. But not all moms feel like they can find their place in tech that easily. Hi, my name is Will Newsom, and you're listening to Tech Start. In this show, we explore the realities of changing careers and getting into tech. In this episode, my guest Dina tells us how she broke into tech with two young kids and a third one on the way. Keep listening to hear her story and learn why boot camps might be the secret to unlocking opportunities for women who want to become working moms in tech. I really love the idea of like just working from home um, and just how that blended in with like my whole like family life. Um, uh, You know, being a mom of three, it's like I'm balancing that whole professional, you know, role of like what I want to do for my career and also like just the at home atmosphere and just making sure that everything is taken care of at home. My kids needs are met and, and all of that kinds of good stuff. So it was a weird way that I stumbled upon programming languages. I don't remember exactly how I, I stumbled upon it. I think it was some sort of like clip. I don't know that I saw on social media and just about coding and, and I just decided that I would just, you know, take a course and see what it was like. So I took a, a Python programming course and I just loved it. I didn't expect that I would love it so much. I mean, I I used to, you know, hear about programming languages and coding, but it was never something that I thought I would be interested in. When I did it, I was like really just in love. I wanted to keep on learning more and more. And so um, I finished that Python programming course and I was like, oh my gosh, like I think I want to try something in this field. I want to, you know, I didn't know what exactly, I didn't know if I wanted to go into data science or what I wanted to do exactly. But I I, I thought I wanted to see where I can build this skill that I'm just now loving, you know. At the time, I was a mom of two. But as a mom, I'm just like, I can't, I don't want to enroll in, you know, traditional university and the because I did all that already. I was already, you know, I got my bachelor's in psychology. I did the whole college thing. And I'm just like, I can't imagine having to invest all that time, you know, going to campus and um, going to, you know, college. And and so I started looking for like online programs. And I found Triple Ten. <laughs> I thought, let me look into this a little bit more. My wife, I'm married to, she's currently a teacher and she's actually in the software engineering uh, cohort because you guys are both teachers. What part of like teaching would you say helped you in like your tech journey and it's helping you in tech journey and what kind of like got in the way of it? Hmm, um, yeah, I would say not everyone can be a teacher, but I think those that have been teachers have a really good understanding of how to teach themselves (laughs) and how to like learn better. (laughs) I think I definitely don't think being, um, you know, a teacher in the past and a tutor in the past has ever hindered my ability to like, you know, learn and get through the program. If anything, it's actually helped. It's helped me because it, you know, gave me the skills and tools that helped me be better organized and help me, you know, take better notes So yeah, um, even though it seems unrelated, I really feel like teaching is one of those like um, multidimensional fields where you can apply teaching to pretty much anything because we're always learning, right? Like we're always learning. It doesn't matter what we're doing in life or what we're doing, what what role we're doing. We're always learning something. We're always going to learn something new or we hope we're learning something new every day, right? (laughs) So yeah. I, I feel like it's hopefully it's helping your wife to get, you know, yeah, learn and, yeah. and and be better at like uh, having those those tools. And, and I spoke with a rep at the time, a rep of, of Triple Ten about like, you know, what are the details of the program? What's the structure, the curriculum? How's like the community at Triple Ten? And I just loved how open the reps were because this was a new field for me. So I was just like, oh my gosh, is this something that I could do? Is it something that 
I would be flexible and be able to fit in my life. But I mean, I got a lot of reassuring feedback from Triple Ten. And honestly, I mean, it was all true. All of the like the support that I got from the mentors, all of the like the positive feedback that I got from the tutors and just the help that you get and the kind of community that they create is it's just very it it doesn't make you feel like you're doing it alone. And I just decided to go for it. And so, yeah, (laughs) the rest is history. (laughs) So I started the program as a mom of two, and then I came out of the program as a mom of three. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, I mean, I found out I fell pregnant with my third, like about two months months into the program. I'm like, oh, this is going to make things even more interesting. So I have to. (laughs) Man. Yeah. Hey, I I made it through. (laughs) So how old are your oldest two uh, children? I have a five-year-old, a four-year-old, and and now an okay. eight month old. That obviously you were still pregnant mm-hmm. with the youngest, but how did the four and five year old uh, impact like your yeah. boot camp journey? I know yeah, it's extremely difficult. I mean, difficult. you know, <laughs> it was. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It was hard. Um, but I would say that I took the first couple months sort of trying to figure out how I'm going to like allocate my time better, how I'm going to manage my time, how I'm going to balance the bedtimes, the meal times, the all of the little needs that the kids have with also just kind of trying to find even just little slots of time during the day um, to just get some studying done or get some some work done on my project. So it, it did take like a, to, for me a couple months of adjustment to really find a really good like sweet spot in terms of what what were the times that worked for me to study to get projects done, to collaborate. Yeah, it, it's challenging, but I I have to say the way that um, Triple Ten structures their data science program and probably other programs that they have, they structure it in a way that makes it easy to, you know, have you go on your own pace and not like, like if you need an extension on a deadline, especially if, you know, you're, you're in a, tight, like time crunch, if you need an extension, they're usually pretty, um, you know, open to working with you. Um, and they're, they're very understanding, like the community managers are very understanding of everybody has lives. And maybe we're not going to make this uh, project deadline at this date, but, but they work it out with you. And it makes it feel like you can do it. And there were times that I that my, my confidence was shook, I, I have to say, but at the end of it all, I, I felt like I was immersed in a community at Triple Ten that was very supportive, very understanding. And I, I didn't feel like I would, I, um, you know, I had to do it all, all the time. Like, it's okay to like give and take here and there. So as long as I was, I was making progress, that was what mattered. So I was just so trying to find if I could do this, you know, like trying to find confidence. And that was like, there was not a shortage of that in the community. So. I know my cohort is like, was very diverse. Did you have like meet like and or make relationships with people that had like similar situations with you, like maybe having kids or like same geographic location or? Yeah, I made some quick you know, buddies, study buddies, <laughs> or uh, like, you know, uh, project buddies pretty early on. And it was really easy to find coming ground. Um, there were definitely um, a couple moms in my cohort, especially in the beginning when you get introduced um, and you say, you kind of talk about yourself. There were, I think I, I noticed that there were a couple moms talking about how they were trying to find something that they were good at Okay, being a mom is the most, like the absolutely most beautiful thing, um, most rewarding thing in the world. But we, we're, we're people, we're individuals, we have personalities, we have hobbies, we have the other things that we're good at other than being a, a mom. <laughs> so it was nice to see other moms also in the community that were also sharing that same sentiment. There were also people really, what I loved too was that there were people from other, just other backgrounds and other areas of like the other across the country and just, you know, going through their own things. Like I knew one, um, one girl, she was doing her PhD 
um, while also doing the program. So that was really oh, cool and inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's huge. How did you maintain like these two like very different like social roles, like being a mother on one <laughs> hand and a mother of young children too, which is different. I think of being a mother of older children oh, yeah. be out of the house mm-hmm. and then like being this tech genius yeah. data scientist. <laughs> Sometimes it kind of felt like Jekyll and Hyde, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, okay, I got to take off like my um, data science hat and just get, you know, get back into like momming. Sometimes challenging too, because I mean, um, there were times where I was like really like it, down a rabbit hole coding, you know, and, you know, I have, you know, my son come up and trying to get my attention or kind of tr- trying to want to play with me or making a lot of noise. And, you know, the small kids, they just make so much noise. Like there's no <laughs> quiet study around yeah. small kids. <laughs> it was challenging, but uh, for me, I would just take advantage of the after bedtime hours. <laughs> That would be the time where I would code the most. And I felt like that helped me a lot. Like I was at at the time, I I mean, I was just so used to um, just focusing on being a a stay at home mom and focusing on all of those, the need, my my kids needs. And then what I loved about this uh, program is that it just, it just felt like, okay, I can, I found a skill that I'm really good at and I finally can like channel my outlet through that, you know, because you're a mom, you're just always serving and serving and serving, you know, your family and serving your kids and your husband and your home. I don't want to say resentment. It's it's not resentment. It's like this, this feeling where it's just like, I wish I had some sort of an outlet to channel some of that, that, cre- you know, creative energy. Even though it's challenging, I feel like it makes me a better mom to have, you know, a skill that I'm, you know, exercising and, and growing in. What other aspects of like the program allowed you to uh, channel that energy and be a great mom simultaneously? Yeah, well, there is a lot of opportunity at the program to do other things other than just the projects and the curriculum and um, the tasks that you are assigned. And I had the absolute honor of being able to participate in the code bridge that they they have and which was Honestly, I'm I'm just so grateful for that opportunity because I mean, I was in the middle of, you know, my DS sprint at the time, my data science sprint, and I kept feeling this itch where I'm like, I really want to see if I can do this like in like a real real world kind of setting. And so when we were presented with the code bridge opportunity, which is like a competition where, you know, you work with other data scientists and maybe other other students from other programs it gives you the experience of doing something in like kind of in a real world setting so yeah i was able to work with a software engineering student at the time and we created like um, an informative landing site. We worked on it together, which was an awesome experience and really just uh, made it feel real. And it gave me confidence to just feel like, yeah, you know what? I can do this. It's I'm not just it, it's not just like that kind of academic bubble where you're feeling like, oh, you can do it. But within like this like academic environment, but like, no, you can do it even like in this kind of like real world setting. And yeah, we ended up winning the competition, which was awesome. Nice. <laughs> so that was that was really fun. Can you tell us a little bit about what you did your code bridge project on? Yeah, we selected like a data set. We were given a bunch of data sets and we, um, me and my partner decided to uh, go with a, um, a data set that was about... Um, making New York City a bit more like greener um, by planting trees um, in like the urban areas, which was really fascinating to us. We we both were really into like environmental science. And so this is something that kind of s- speaks to us. So we chose that data set and we, we went with it and we built informative uh, website about how this program was so successful um, uh, in terms of like planting trees in in, um, in like those very urban areas in like the boroughs of New York. And um, 
And it, I mean, it, it was, it's, ba it's basically a, a, a site that, um, you know, people can visit to learn more about the program and about how, um, you know, that program, um, can be like implemented maybe in other, um, like highly dense city areas. So, and we were able to present it live on live stream. It was definitely a great feeling. And it was, of course, an even better feeling when we found out that we won. <laughs> it was like, oh, okay. So <laughs> I guess yeah. we, I mean, it's, it's not that it didn't just look good in our eyes. So it, that, that yeah. definitely felt great. After we, we, like I graduated from the program, another great extracurricular activity that Triple Ten has is, um, I guess you can consider it extracurricular, but they have um, an apiary program or like an externship program. So the company partners with Triple Ten and you participate in the externship. So that's what I did. So I externed for Yeshe and they, the project at the time was they were looking for solutions to their current problem, which was to try to build a model that would predict geolocation from tweets, like actual tweets. What I did is I built a Kira's model with a, a deep learning BERT approach. And the data set that, that Yeshe provided us was a an actual like actual data that, that was harvested from like Twitter. They had geolocation, they had some other um, metadata and other user information. And they were just asking for ideas. But what I loved is that each one of us had came up with a different solution and a different approach. And we were able to be a part of their solution, which was really cool. Yeah, we, um, we were able to present our findings to, um, you know, Yeshe reps. And we, the Yeshe rep told us that like your, solutions are going to be part of like their project. That's a really big, you know, that's a big deal, especially for somebody who's just trying to break into the field. Like y Yeshe was really interested in seeing if they can, if, if someone tweets something, if they can find their exact location, like can they predict, a, uh, you know, a, a, a tweeter's exact location based on what they tweet, based on the text in their tweet which is just incredible. Like, I mean, just the thought that we have that kind of technology and we can apply it to something like that is really like fascinating. So definitely a little scary too. <laughs> scary. Yeah. <laughs> That brings us to a good point. I mean, we never asked in the beginning, but what made you choose data science? Yeah, that's a good question. So like I said, I, I finished my uh, Python programming class, that one course I took, and I really was like in love with like just learning how to use that programming um, language. And I really love like just the skill of coding. So like, how can I apply this in a way that you know, I can make a career out of it. I did my research and I kind of weighed out the options. I thought, you know, if like based on my background, my experience, I was personally never really a big math person. So, I mean, there were, there were some fields where I'm just like, I don't really know if I want to go into those fields. But Data science to me in the beginning when, it, when I was just reading about it seemed like it was pretty interesting. I really loved um, the aspect of machine learning and just um, how, you know, you can build models to do things for you with code. Have you have you found a, a job yet uh, in data science field? I haven't. So the job market now is crazy. It's not great. But I mean, I'm I'm keeping a positive outlook. How do you go about like your job search? Do you leverage like LinkedIn, like Close Connects on LinkedIn? Like how do you network or like what, what's been your practice in job searching? Yeah. So one of the most important things um, that I've learned is just network, network, network as much as possible. Especially if you like for me, I was never really a LinkedIn person. I never even had a LinkedIn before I, oh, <laughs> before oh, I graduated. Okay. So when I when I created my LinkedIn, I started learning about all of the resources and the tools that you can use on LinkedIn to just really 
um, build your network and also make a meaningful network, make meaningful connections, network with people in the industry and ask them questions about what it's like to do their job. Like, what is it like in the real world? Like what worked for you to land your job, you know, or how, what kinds of things do you do on a, on a daily basis as a data scientist, for, for example, all those things will help you get more clarity on the role that you are, you know, looking for and what you should do to you know, sort of tailor your resume and cover letters to the roles that you're interested in. What would you prefer doing in the future, like social projects like you did for the Code Bridge mm -hmm. or maybe a project like the Ashe? Yeah, you know, um, I love that I had such a diverse background in these sort of real world simulation projects. And personally to me, I am I have a very strong interest in helping people and just really like doing something that's going to have like a positive impact on people. So I think that I would probably go towards the more like health care field uh, or healthcare domain of um, data science. Are you worried about sometimes like maybe hiring managers or managers like reaction to you yeah. and maybe switching careers too? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, first of all, we're like, <laughs> women are not really that you know, we're a minority in the field, I think in general, which can, you know, make you feel kind of make me feel kind of insecure. But yeah, absolutely. Like, being a stay at home mom, and also like being a woman just does make you feel a certain type of way in terms of am I can I still be fit for this role? Like, like what kind of what kind of schedule do, do certain companies like expect you know out of their employees and personally for me I am looking for a role that is a remote role which would like work better for just for my lifestyle and um and my family and what's great about data science roles is that there are a lot of remote roles but you have to be very selective about which companies you're applying to because there are some companies that are very understanding of work life balance and work life culture but then there are other companies that might not have so much of an emphasis on that and might expect you to work this many hours in the week so it's all about kind of doing your research on what companies uh really promote like uh, work-life balance and companies that sort of, I guess you can call them mom-friendly. <laughs> That's something that I keep in mind all the time when I apply to jobs. What advice would you have to other moms, young, older, wiser, considering breaking into tech? I would say that if you even have the slightest interest, just dabble in it a little bit. Get, um, get yourself familiar with coding. Get yourself familiar with um, the, the programming language or get yourself familiar with, with the programs um, and just try it, try it and see if it's, uh, it's something that you're interested in. And um, because, I mean, there's this such this, the, the stigma where it's like, okay, like I'm a mom and, you know, I have all these responsibilities as a mom. How am I going to do something like this? You know, but it's doable. It's not going to be easy, but the guarantee is if you have the, the, you know, the determination to get through, um, you know, get through the obstacles and the challenges, then you're going to get through the whole thing. You know, as long as you have that mindset where you can you can get through it. I know it sounds cheesy and all of that, but <laughs> it's true. It's really all about your mindset, because a lot of times, um, you know, us moms, we we're so unsure our, our schedules are so unpredictable with small children. You don't know how your day is really going to go. You can, you can, you can plan it as best as you can, but you don't know how <laughs> your kids are going to, you know, really react to, to, to it and uh, how they're really, if they're, if the day is going to go smoothly or if it's not going to go smoothly. Cause you have these, you know, small little personalities that, you know, have their wants and needs and everything. So it's very unpredictable. You know, your schedule is very unpredictable, but, but if you have that mindset that 
No matter what obstacle you have in your way, you're going to get to the other side, then you, you can get through it. This podcast was brought to you by Lebo Lebo Studio in partnership with Triple Ten. Stay tuned for next week's episode and visit tripleton.com slash blog for more career tips.